God is good. Amen. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Would you turn to Galatians chapter 6, please? And verse 7. Do not be what? Don't be what? Don't be deceived. Don't be stupid. Don't be misled. Don't be blinded. Amen? God's not going to be mocked. For whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. Amen? Nobody gets away with it. Nobody. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. He who sows, again, to the flesh. Now, one of the things that people don't realize is that the words, words sown, your words are sowing into the Spirit or into, from the flesh, one or the other. They're coming from one or the other. They could be coming from the soul of emotion. So we sow words of corruption or words of life. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Good. We're going to go a little further then. Verse 9. And let us not what? Grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not what? Lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Again, we sow words of corruption or sow words of life. Now, due season is God's time of release. What is due season? God's time of release. Hallelujah. So he says, listen, if you hold fast, God is going to release something from heaven into this present time for you. If you what? If you are sowing in the spirit. Amen? In the due season, it's a God-specific time of release. But there's something we got to do. Continue to sow in the spirit, not the flesh. Amen? Praise God. And it's our words that are the most thing. It's your words. Words sown in the flesh or sown in the spirit. Amen? Sometimes you, you're speaking things out of uh, out of your emotions, or you're speaking things out of anger, or whatever it may be. How you feel, your opinion. This is how I feel about this. Ah, shut up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Does everybody get it? These are, now see, so those, look at, we want words that are backed by the Spirit. Penetrating words. See, there's a difference of words that are penetrating and words that are not penetrating. If you're sowing words from the flesh or from the soul of emotion, they're not penetrating. This is what's the difference between the sword of the spirit and just a sword. The sword of the spirit are words that penetrate. They change things. They do something. They won't come back void. Why? Because they're words from God. So in due season, when the Spirit releases, uses you to release a word, you want to make sure that it's backed by the Spirit of God and not by your emotions or your kernel or your anger or frustration. Amen? Because whatever you sow, you're going to what? Reap. Romans chapter 8 and verse 12. Therefore... Brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, of, of the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and of children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. 
if indeed we what? Suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be what? Revealed in us. You know, I, 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 I'm seeing so many people suffer. Whether it's through sickness or bondage or addiction or family destruction or sour or rejection, whatever it is, it's people suffering. You know, there's, there's suffering all over the world. I was really grieved the other day because I, was, I went to go visit some people in the hospital, man. It's like suffering everywhere. And it was really just grieving my spirit. And I said, Lord, humanity is suffering so badly. What can we do? And you know what he said to me? He said, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's exactly what he said to me. Hello. Sufferings or reapings of these past times in the <laughs> of the things that we've sown in the flesh. We must refocus on the due season that is coming to us. Amen. We must refocus on the due season that's coming to us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Again, sufferings or reapings of this present time in this realm, we must constantly refocus on the due season that is coming to us, no matter what's going on, as long as we're sowing in the Spirit. Amen? Why? Because we want to maintain words that are penetrating. Words that are penetrating, words that are changing lives, words that are changing circumstances, words that are changing atmospheres. Hebrews 5.5. 5. You know, when you think about praise and worship, it's changing things, isn't it? It's penetrating words. You're changing things. You're changing the atmosphere. You're making way for God to come. Driving out the powers of darkness. Let's speak it. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son today, I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his glory godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he what? See, he learned obedience. In other words, he learned discipline. He learned something very important. He learned discipline of God's timing or due season. What? Through what? Sufferings. Through trials and tribulations. Why? Because you know everything's going to work to the good if you're truly in line with God. No matter what's happening. Having been perfected, he became the author of all, of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Hallelujah. Again, 
learned, we learn obedience. We learn discipline. We learn these things of God's timing that are coming in due season. We learn them. Why? Because every time we've gone through, through something, one or the other, whatever it is, trial, tribulation, disappointment, as long as we stay in line, we're sowing in the spirit, everything's working to the good. We know it's going to work to the good. But you know what? You know, we all know, once we start sowing in the flesh at all, we know things are going to all over again. You know it. Man, I can't believe I'm going to. Again, it doesn't mean that, and we talked about this before about, you know, resurrendering. It doesn't mean you're not going to make a mistake. It's what you do about it. Amen? And you try to justify it. You try to reason with it. You try to blame somebody else for your mistakes. It ain't going to work. And, and, and so many times, again, we want to stay in this position so that our words are penetrating. Amen. Psalm 19, in verse 12, please. You know, discipline always has to do with consistency, doesn't it? You don't change, although everything else can, can change around you. You are consistent. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth align with your due season of release so that they become penetrating words of the Spirit and life that come from the regenerated heart of Christ that's within me. Amen? I know you can't write that all down at one time. Unless you got super shorthand. <laughs> I will repeat it. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth align with your due season of release to become penetrating words of the spirit that is life. Now these come from the regenerated heart of Christ within us. Amen. Proverbs 15, verse 22, please. Without counsel, plans go away. But in a multitude of counselors, they are, they are established. Let me share something with you which is vitally important. Without counsel or need of instruction, many go astray. Words in due season is released from the Lord when you are submissive to counsel. Everybody get it? Counsel of the Lord. So many people make plans without getting counsel. Those words will never, they won't penetrate until they finally get in line and submission to the counsel of the Lord. They will not have penetrating words. Their words will fall to the ground. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Uh, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. And a word spoken in what? Due season. Ah, how good it is. <laughs> That's God's time, isn't it? Amen? The way of life, of life wins a word for the wise that he may turn away from hell below. Well, again, without counsel or need of instruction, many go astray. The, their words... In due season will be released from the Lord, but if they constantly, if they reject counsel and go about in, in their own ways without confirmation of things, their words will no longer become penetrating. Why? Because they go in cycles. They will always recycle. So many times people want counsel when they haven't completed the first counsel. And they wonder why things aren't happening. Psalm 1-1. One, one. Blessed is the man who what? Walks not in the counsel of self, ungodly, self. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates, he focuses 
day and night in his word. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall what? Not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Listen, prosper comes from words. Amen? These are words that are penetrating. If you're not releasing words that are not penetrating, you ain't prospering. You'll stay in a vicious cycle and always repeat. Reset, repeat, never advance. Amen? It's because they become anxious and fearful and worry. Now they're getting counsel from their emotions. Not from the Spirit. Luke 12, 42, please. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in what? Do you see? That food is revelation. Who will release what? Revelation. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Hallelujah. Food is revelation. It's unveil unveiling the mystery of heaven, something specifically that is going to encourage you. It's going to advance you. It's revelation of Jesus Christ, something more you might know about him or something more you might know about your identity. Food from heaven is called revelation. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no what? Revelation. People cast off what? Restraints of what? The first thing they cast off is a restraint of their tongue. But happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? One that can't shut up? There is more hope for a fool than him. Hello. Why? No revelation, no restraint to the tongue and flesh. Their words are not penetrating either. They just want to get more words in. It's a battle over words. It's how, many can I, how many words can I speak faster than you? Psalm 39 and verse 1. I said, I will guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are before me. Whoa. I was mute with silence. I held my peace, even from good. And my sorrow was what? Stirred up. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Instead of saying something stupid, Hello? What does he say? Lord, make me to know my end. Amen? And what is the measure of my days? <laughs> that I may know how frail I am. Wow. Make me know my days. That I may know how frail I am. Those were penetrating words. They penetrated the heart of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guard my words, restrain my tongue from flesh that has no penetrating words of righteousness or healing. Restrain my words from my soulish emotions. Restrain my words from my carnal thinking. Restrain me that only the words that I speak and release are according to the Spirit of God. Psalm 40, verse 8. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. In other words, his words. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips, O oh Lord, you, sh you sh yourself know. So he wasn't restrained in his lips from the good things of penetrating words, amen? I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Hmm. Those are penetrating words. 
Psalm 119 and verse 104. We know that the tongue is a little rudder that can, you know, throw you right off the cliff, crash you and everything else. We must be careful of what we speak. Where it says uh, we'll have words that will either fall to the ground or be penetrating. You know, remember the old sandwich that sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt me. Baloney. They hurt everybody. <laughs> The problem is they hurt you more than they do others. You think you may be saying something or trying to hurt someone, but they're actually, you're hurting you. There may be a, a moment of, oh, that felt good to destroy that person. But it will kick you right back in the butt. It, words of boomerang. And you can't outrun them. They'll catch up to you and stab you in the back, you know. To your what? Precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way, every false word, every lie. I mean, you know, think about it right now. You know, people are finally waking up that all of these political, democratic, and so forth parties that are out there, they're all lying. That's all they do is lie, lie and lie. They have no penetrating words. In fact, the media tries to promote their lies. To penetrate, but people are finally waking up. They're like, you know what? You're an idiot. And I'm not going to believe your stuff. You're going to wake up in hell. They are anti-Christ. They are evil, wicked. They have no words anymore that can penetrate. The only thing that they can do is lie and deceive. They have no life-giving words anymore. They have no healing words. They have no comforting words anymore. They have nothing but lying words. And that's coming to an end. That's, good. that's coming to an end. Look at verse 105. Your word is a what? Lamp unto my feet. And a what? A light unto my path. Well, that because we can see when, listen, when you are right with God and you're walking right with the Lord and your heart is pure. Amen? And you're decreeing the things that God is saying. No longer just throwing stuff out of your mouth to speak. You're releasing penetrating words. In fact, you're discerning now. You're holding back words that don't need to be released. Lord, should I say that now? You're always acknowledging the Lord and what you're to say. Then you begin to release penetrating words. And what happens is these words are now light and a lamp. They're setting your path for you. Amen? But if you're speaking words that are not setting, that are not light, and a lamp onto your path, you're going to be misled. See, the powers of darkness, all of these democratic associations, they're stumbling over their own feet. They're stumbling over their own words. Why? Because they can't see no more. Amen? Oh, Hallelujah. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. Hallelujah. Words is lamp and light to the feet, penetrating words in due season. Due season means what? God's time. God's time. Sometimes, and, and again, people are sometimes are sharing certain things and releasing. Their, the Bible says, do not throw your what? Pearls before swine. That's when it's a word that's released, not at God's time. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13. You know, when we first get saved, we're all excited, man. You know, we want to tell everybody about Jesus. We puke over everyone. Because many times we're st speaking things not out of, God in, out of due season. Because we don't know any better. We don't, we're, we're, we're led by emotion because we're so excited. i got to tell you about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Man, man, I had so many people come up to me, Jesus loves me, I wanted to kill them. Of course, I was a heathen then. Don't tell me Jesus loves me. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if Jesus loved me. You know how we think when we're carnal. 
If Jesus loved me, he freed me from this addiction. If Jesus loved me, he would send that millions of dollars so I can go out and buy cocaine and overdose. Hello? You kid, I was waiting for that bale of dope to come through my roof every single day. Something else came, freed me. Hallelujah. I used to hear people up finding dope everywhere. Think, Why couldn't it be me? <laughs> if I'd have been dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, we all been there. Amen. Let's get real now. When you're a dopey, you're a dopey. You wish for dopey things. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. I believe and therefore what? Spoke. Those were penetrating words. We also believe and therefore speak. Now, what's the word believe mean? Follow. So if you're a person that's not following, you got no right to speak those things. In fact, the Lord rebukes individuals in that area. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that grace, having spread to the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I spoke because I believe, because I follow. Psalm 50, 16. Now, you got to remember, so many times people think that people that are wicked are just, the word wicked also means rebellious and disobedient. Amen? It's not just somebody that's an antichrist. Hello? These are also believers that are rebellious and disobedient. God says you're wicked. Okay. Psalm 50, verse 16, let's speak it. Is everybody there? But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction or counsel or correction and cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with the adulterers. You give your mouth to what? Evil, and your tongue frames what? Deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget me, he says, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver you. Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Now, that's all powerful words. Amen? I'm going to close at one, uh, Psalm 141. Verse 1. Words of penetration. Man, you want your words to penetrate. Now, listen. You might be praying for somebody and whatever. Just because it doesn't manifest right then and there doesn't mean your words are not penetrated. As long as you know that you're writing with God. You know something is happening somewhere. God is going to make a way. Amen? Let's speak it. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of their what? Delicacies. Let the righteous smack me, strike me. It shall be a kindness. And let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it. Why? He's willing to accept it, a rebuke. Man, you try and correct someone, they get all offended. And their tongue really snaps. Hallelujah. 
for still my prayers against the what? Deeds of the wicked. See, because he was releasing penetrating words, prayers that were destroying the powers of darkness. People are trying to destroy the power of darkness with penetrating words when they're not backed by the Spirit of God because they're out of order. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 6, their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave as with one plows breaks up the earth. But my eyes are upon you, you, O oh God, the Lord, and you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. Hallelujah. Penetrating words are words of penetration. We have the choice. Amen. We have the choice. So, Father, we thank you for your word. Your word penetrate tonight to each and every heart, mind, will, and desire. That we may walk in divine order according to your will, according to your counsel. And knowing that in due season, you're going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Because we walk in your divine order. Lord, I pray blessing over each and every one. I thank you, Lord, that we are learning obedience through our sufferings and patience, <laughs> knowing that it's your timing, your release of the words. So, Lord, keep us in the area where we are constantly restrained and not releasing stupid words, but only words that penetrate for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.